Okay, everybody, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, my name is Amber Livingston. I am the three-day specialist here at Susan G. Komen headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Um, we are joined today my, by Miguel Perez, who is our SVP of the Affiliate Network and our interim SVP of Marketing, as well as Victoria Velajko, whose job title is way too long for me to remember. So she is essentially our vice president of our mission and research. Um, and we just wanted to take the opportunity to um, get the three dayers, you know, on the phone and give you some insight as to where we are heading um, as an organization. Um, so I'm sure over the past several weeks you have seen um, the announcement of our bold goal um, to reduce the current number of breast cancer deaths in the U.S. by 50% in the next decade, um, as well as our More Than Pink movement um, that we've recently launched. And so we just wanted to um, give you guys the opportunity to, um, again, see where we're going as an organization and see how the three-day um, is going to play into um, reaching our bold goal. Um, so before I um, hit it over to Miguel, um, you guys are able to ask questions, so please just submit them um, in the question box. Um, that's on the right of the kind of screen that you guys have there. Um, we'll get to those towards the end. If we don't get to all of them, we will um, type up answers just as we do with the um, mission webinar pieces and um, email those out to all of the participants who were on the call today. Um, and then this webinar is also being recorded, um, so that way um, it can be viewed at a later date as well. Um, so with that, I will toss it over to um, Miguel to get us started. Thanks, Amber, and thank you, everyone. Um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on what uh, time zone you're in. Uh, start out by saying thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done uh, this year and in previous years for uh, Komen, um, and then advancing our mission through the three-day. Um, I've uh, had the chance to meet some of you last year at um, San Diego and Dallas events at our impact forums across the country in the winter. I was out in Seattle earlier this year, earlier this summer. Um, it's always such an inspirational and moving event, and I'm just uh, awe-inspired by the work that you all do, not only <clears throat> physically to complete the task, but to... Uh, bring your family, friends, and everybody into the fold and to the fundraising and advancing the mission. So when we talked to um, Amber about connecting with you all, you know, we do see you as an extended part of the family. You're the people that are helping us advance the mission, as so many people across the country do. And we wanted, we know it's important to you to know where your dollars are going. We wanted to give you information so that you could share with those supporters, those uh, funders that you have that help you move this forward to give them information as to where the organization is going. So we thought we'd kind of give you some what I like to call inside the dugout information, um, a very high level view of our strategic plan. It's a three-year plan and how we got there just so you can see um, where we're going and also how uh, three-day is one of the priorities, the strategic priorities uh, for funding the mission work and why we need um, more and more people to join join the uh, three-day program and continue to to do more and more and more. So uh, we can go to the next slide, Amber. <clears throat> this slide right here that you're seeing is basically just our framework um, of what makes a good strategy. This could be used anywhere, really. But this is what we use and uh, with our outside consultants that took our senior leadership through a several month um, exercise to get to our strategic plan and our framework. We incorporated feedback here from our, um, from our affiliates, from donors, from key staff, from leadership, from our board, from our uh, scientific advisors. Everyone that is a key stakeholder had some sort of uh, play here, whether it was directly as part of this exercise or through some other exercise, that we collected that data and put it in here. So to, to have a good strategy, you have to have a vision, you have to have a mission, and you have to have a goal. You, you got to know where to play and how to win. And as you see on the side there, we, we knew that we had to make a, a case for change. What was that case for change and what was the point of departure? And to reach that vision, mission, and goal that we set for ourselves, what were the most strategic imperatives that we had to turn our attention to, and what 
do our focus ha our focuses have to be? Okay, it's all well and good to do that, but you have to know what is required. What capabilities do you have to have to make those come to life and to really move them forward? So then we decided what those capabilities were, and then what were the specific initiatives under each of those capabilities that needed to happen. When you put all that together and you get everyone on the same page, then you have an aligned and mobilized organization, which is what we are doing now as we put this goal, this uh, plan into action. And as we continue to spread this information with everybody, and you have that bottom rung there where it says aligned and mobilized organization. We're in this together, big black triangle at the top of this mission and goal. So on the next page, I will show you where we landed. <clears throat> Our vision has not changed. Um, we went through an exercise of really discussing this and do we want to change this and does it make sense? And at the end of the day, we all came to the same conclusion. One day, we want to see a world without breast cancer. That is the long-range vision. That is what we want to see one day. So we, what we did do is change our mission to be more in line with the work that we really do because it wasn't really capturing the entire essence of the work that uh, Komen does. And we are unique in that we are working in communities and in the labs. And we're not just, we're not just a, a solely a research organization. So this mission really points out that differentiator and captures who we are in, in a better way. So I'll read that to you. Save lives, our mission is to save lives by meeting the most critical needs in our communities and investing in breakthrough research to cure breast cancer. And Victoria, who will speak a little bit uh, later, will get dive a little more deeper into that and help you understand what we mean by uh, the community and the breakthrough research. And as Amber mentioned, you've probably seen that we have put a stake in the ground and made a pretty big, bold statement that within the next decade, our goal is to reduce the current number of breast cancer deaths in the U.S. by 50%. Um, the number of deaths from breast cancer, though, ha has not changed. It's been that number 40,000 that you hear over and over in statistics has not changed, and we have set out um, by 50% reduction by 50% in the next 10 years. I'm trying to stop myself from going into all of the sound bites because I did that slide. Okay, the next slide, please. So I, I am going to turn it over to Victoria now before I start talking through everything that she can share with you much more eloquently than I can. So, Victoria? <laughs> Miguel, thank you so much for, for setting me up and for not uh, giving all of my, my best talking points. I greatly appreciate that, but you do it so well. Um, it's, all, it's always a pleasure to follow you as a speaker. So um, hello, three-day community. I first want to reiterate Miguel's gratitude to all of you um, for the support you've given to our organization over the years. Um, I had the pleasure of walking along alongside hopefully many of you um, in Detroit, in Atlanta, and this past weekend in my hometown here of Philadelphia. It's been a real honor to be with you in support of the three day, the people that you love, and, and our mission um, at Susan G. Coleman. And there is a lot to be grateful as well for the decades long breast cancer movement, and we do have a lot to celebrate. Um, the three day community has been not only the fuel for that achievement, it has also been an incredible community to help educate the people um, that support you and that you support through your participation in the 3-Day. I think a lot of the education that the 3-Day community is able to drive throughout your network, not only education about breast cancer and the hope that we bring to folks who are facing the disease, but also the help that the Susan G. Coleman an organization can provide through our great investment in thousands of community-based programs and our research activities that are all being made possible um, by what you're doing with the three-day and the funds that you're raising. Uh, we like to celebrate the fact that breast cancer death rates have declined by 37% since 1990. That's an incredible statistic that we're proud of. And we look to two things that have specifically supported that. 
not only our ability to encourage people to get early detection and early treatment, but the fact that we've been able to invest in new therapies and targeted treatments for breast cancer that weren't available three decades ago, possible in part because of every one of you. But as Miguel said, continues to remain stagnant, but we are losing the year. And we spent this strategic planning process to really dig, identify what can we as an organization specifically do change that number. And we looked again at the two foundations uh, that support the work we do, the work in community and the work in research. We started with our scientific advisory board to say, you know, what is a reasonable goal? And they advised us based on the discoveries that we've made and the foundational work that we've built that aiming for a 50% reduction in breast cancer mortality is what this community deserves. Uh, we need it to be bold, and we need it to be brash, and we need it to really have a strong call to action to all of the researchers and individuals who support us that it's time to really focus on the most important questions. When we look at the causes of mortality, I think of two things. And the first is being that we're not connecting women and men to the care they need fast enough. In fact, when the Scientific Advisory Board uh, considered this side of the strategic equation, reaching health equity for underserved communities, they said that some research showed that we could reduce mortality by as much as 30% if we would just connect people to care that exists today. That's care that could come without another research breakthrough. So we have a lot of work to do in our communities to address the current racial and ethnic disparities that we see in outcomes. Some of you might be familiar with our work in Chicago, where we found out that we did a great job with encouraging both African American women and white women to get screened. The screening rates were virtually identical, but we couldn't understand why women in that community were dying of breast cancer at a rate 40% higher than others. And what we determined was that there wasn't parity in the quality of care. Women were going to get mammograms at places where the technicians needed more training to accurately identify breast cancer and help get those women into care soon. Kind of things that we'd like to continue to invest strategic imper imperative of reaching communities. It's not enough just to promote early detection but it's more so needed to promote early quality care for early detection and then to encourage women to continue through care diagnostic and treatment services. These are the things that we need to focus on now as an organization in order to achieve a 50% reduction in our goal. We also need to start investing more heavily in patient navigation. Many of you who've walked the breast cancer journey know that care is often incredibly fragmented, and you wonder if some of your doctors even talk to each other. A patient navigator can make a difference um, in the journey and help unlock all the mysteries of where do you go next. Research has shown that women who are navigated through care do and who are not. And at Susan G. Coleman, we'd like to invest in more patient navigation to ensure that more women are benefiting from, from that care. On the research side, you know, we've talked about 30% could be helped just by connecting them to existing care. For the other side of the equation, what's happening is that we have right now are failing the women and men who are being prescribed them. And we need to do better. And this is why we need to find breakthroughs for incurable cancer and focusing on three particular areas that we feel will move the needle rapidly for women facing the disease. Amber, could you go back to the prior screen? Thank you. So there are three things we're looking at. First is unlocking earliest detection. And while mam mammography has been our gold standard for many, many years, it's still 1950s technology pr primarily, and it's only detecting about 85% of cancers. At Susan G. Komen, we feel that that's unacceptable and we need to invest in next generation technology 
that will not only be more accurate, but will be less invasive and more easily able to be distributed to women and men who need the technology no matter where they live. The truth is in some communities, the closest mammography facility may be hours and hours away. That's unacceptable. We'd like to see new technologies that can make the early detection really early detection and not rotation. But early primary breast cancer, when you're talking about breast cancer mortality, we're talking, for the most part, people who are losing their lives to metastatic disease. It's critical for us to reach our goal to detect the earlier recurrence, the earlier we better chance we are of getting people connected. We need better technologies in order to detect recurrence, and these are the investments that we're going to make. In terms of looking at metastasis, we will be increasing our investment in metastasis, not only in biology to understand why the disease recurs and why it progresses and travels to other places in the body, but to use that knowledge to translate that into effective treatments that will help people today. We need to get more women into clinical trials that will be life-saving. We need to invest more in understanding how we can prevent metastasis in the first place. And that will come only if we advance therapeutics. We need better treatments. We need novel approaches to treatments. The best defense against metastasis is to get the treatment right in the first place. And we are committed to making that happen through strong investments in research programs, but also in strong collaborations with others who are working in this field. We were incredibly excited to partner with one of our young investigators who had an innovative idea for the very first time to, to collect tissue samples from women who are living with metastatic disease. It's astounding to me in the age of such great discovery that this is the first time that a scientist is doing this work, but we are so grateful and so proud to be one of the first organizations to support his innovative idea, and we're looking forward to the great discovery and the great developments that will come as a result of learning more about the people who are living with the disease. These are, this is just a snapshot of some of the things that are exciting us about our strategic goal and the things that we feel will contribute to a reduction in breast cancer death in the U.S. by half. And while some of this is a research goal and some of this is a health equity goal, the truth is that we still need strong advocacy to make this happen. Common alone can't do this with our investment. We need to work, work very strongly with our local and national governments to continue to put the policies and the programs in place that will drive progress against breast cancer. We need to be innovative in how we think about the disease, and we need to continue to drive this through partnership. We simply can't do it alone. And by that, by alone, I also mean we can't do it without you. All of you have contributed to the great progress we've made, and I hope we can count on you to continue to stand with us and help spread the message of the work that we're doing. It's been, in, it's been incredible to be part of this community for the past few months um, and last year when I first joined you all at the Impact Forum. Um, I hope you're excited about our bold goal. And Miguel, I'll turn it over to you, and I'll take questions at the end. Great. Thanks, Victoria. It's, um, very, very exciting, very exciting work. And Victoria talked about the partnerships, and, and I talked earlier about you being a part of the extended family, and I hope you know that that's really um, what we feel. And, and, you know, we've learned over the last couple of years um, the, a, a, a bit of a disconnect between the three-day the three -day community and Komen, and we just want you to be very clear that, that it's anything but that. And um, I credit our incredible team and Chrissy Matthews that was here and now Amber um, for really, you know, being strong advocates for that. And as Victoria mentioned, between Victoria and me, um, Catherine Oliveri, who you've seen on, on event, uh, Lori Maris, Judy Salerno, our president, I mean, there's just overwhelming leadership support. Um, and that's why, uh, you know, we're, we're taking the time today to bring you in, into the fold and, and understand um, how important this is for us um, and for you. So earlier when I showed the, the big triangle about having the strategic imperatives and, and listing the capabilities, what it is that 
<clears throat> would help us, you know, reach these goals. What would, what was it going to take? We broke that down to eight capabilities, and I promise you that we're not going to take you through a deep dive into each of these eight boxes. But I wanted you to be able to see this um, because what uh, Victoria just went over with you is that mission impact. You know, the critical research in the community programs that she she talked about. And then obviously you got, got way deep into that, which is really important to know. But these other boxes are what we have to have, what, what it's going to take for us to make this happen. We have to have dependable funding. Otherwise, the mission work can't happen. We have to raise money. We have to be out there doing everything we can because we are all so passionate and care so much about this. And we have to move it forward. That only happens with our partnerships, with our fund, individual fundraisers, our major donors, our mass market events, every initiative that we have out there. We have to have effective marketing. Essentially, people understanding who we are, knowing who we are, and caring enough um, about the work that we do to put forward their efforts, um, whether that be registration, recruitment, fundraising, um, don donating, any, any of them. We have to have strong supported affiliates. Um, Victoria talked about our community work. We have 100 domestic affiliates throughout the U.S. who are working in their local communities. All of these affiliates are doing the same thing. They're raising money locally. They put 75% of their mission dollars toward local community programs and 25% toward the national research program. Uh, you've heard that very often, the 75-25 split that we do in a number of different iterations for a number of different things that we do. 75-25 just seems to work, but the affiliates have to feel strong, have to be strong, and have to feel supported so that they can do the work that they're doing locally. Also, um, we of course have to be smart and responsible stewards of the dollars that are brought into this organization, and we uh, have tremendous rigor around this. We never want to be the subject of um, public scrutiny for mishandling donors' dollars. And donor dollars, and we are um, have very high ratings on how we handle uh, our stewardship. And on average, for the last five years, 80 cents of every dollar raised through the overall organization has gone toward programming um, or mission work, which is a, a very, very um, solid uh, validation of of our stewardship. Enabling technology, we have to use, we have to adapt and evolve like the rest of the world. We have to be, again, mindful with the dollars that we spend, but we have to provide top-notch te technology to make engaging with Komen um, an easy and pleasurable experience and not um, heavily frustrating, which I know many of you um, through your team raisers have come across issues. We're always looking at improving that and making it better. Um, and we have to have a high-performing organization. If we're, we're filling in all these other boxes and we're providing you know, effective governance and compliance and we're minding our P's and Q's and we're following the laws and we're doing the best we can, we are going to have a high-performing organization. That's what it's going to take for us to reach these goals. I know it sounds like a lot. And if you think about behind each of these boxes, how much goes into that and how much staffing goes into that and how much support is needed, that's how um, complicated and, and how um, intense this work is. But everybody is deeply, deeply passionate about it because we all believe in this mission and especially in this brand new direction and goal. So the next slide will just show you that something I already, you know, um, mentioned earlier that basically this, if you really, really boil down our business model, into one slide. <laughs> this is kind of it. Our mission strategies inform our revenue strategies, and the revenue strategies have to fuel the mission strategies. This is um, if pressed up against you know the, in the corner, and you had to say, what is it that we do? We raise money to fuel mission. That is what we do. Of course, we do so much more. The education, the outreach, the the awareness, the all the bullet points that you can fill in and that Victoria talked about. But this is where it's really important here because as we turn our attention to the future and toward reducing uh, the mortality rate in the U.S. by 50%, we have to focus on how we're going to support that work. 
So on the next slide, what you're going to see here is the top 11 areas of focus, the initiatives that we are hyper-focused on to fuel the mission work. And the reason I put this in here was because I wanted you to see um, very clearly that three-day is a, an area of focus, an area that is supported within the organization, an area that is of high priority to us because this community is so passionate about the work we do and so passionate about advancing this mission that we know we can engage even more people and do great work um, as, as we develop and grow the three-day. So the way we've divided this is through targeted philanthropy, through targeted initiatives and audiences here on the left-hand side, the strategic philanthropy. That's like the planned giving programs and major donor programs and distinguished events, which are bringing um, high net worth individuals together in major cities to get behind Komen and start reaching into their communities to elevate Komen's presence and educate them about what Komen's doing because a lot of people think they know, but they don't know. And also to reach out into more foundations that would support the work of Komen. Um, like a recent, um, many recent gifts which we've received. And then when you look at a larger audience, the mass, um, you see mass market audience there. These are more of our communities. So topping that list, three day, our rates for the cures all across the country, um, our merchandising program, which we relaunched this year with a new vendor and a new, fresh new look, and you've seen a lot of that at three day, and it's been, um, well received, I and mean, we've seen a lot more purchases at three day um, on event with this new vendor. So we're turning our focus on to merchandising as well. Um, brand alliances, digital marketing, direct marketing and digital uh, influencer programs, bringing in leaders within the communities um, and across the country, again, to be a voice, be an advocate, um, step out and speak on behalf of Komen. You may have seen our new list, um, uh, the, the More Than Pink list, which identifies people who have made an incredible contribution in the fight against breast cancer over the past 35 years. And not all specifically with Komen. We don't always have to be the front row. We're willing to sit in the second row or the third row. And like Victoria said, we can't do it alone. And we are about bringing people together. And these influencers will do that and bring people together and bring their communities together to continue to support our work. And DIY um, is a do-it-yourself. Um, I know many people watch this on HDTV and think it's about building a house or redoing a room, but this is where people can do their own fundraising. And now on our um, Komen.org website, there's a way to, if you're having a wedding and you would rather people donate to Komen instead of uh, gifts or in addition to gifts. You can, that, you can set that up very quickly and very easily and have a, a link for your friends um, to, do, to do it yourself, to do a DIY fundraiser. You can do a lemonade stand. There's a number of ideas there. So if you look at those 11 areas of focus, this is where our development team, our marketing team, our race and three-day team, everyone is focused on bringing, elevating these 11 areas of focus to fuel the mission that we have to do. So we always like to say we want to raise a lot of money and give it to Victoria to spend it. And I think that's the last slide, Amber, if I'm not mistaken. So again, I'd just like to um, thank you all for taking time out of your day um, to be with us and more than thank you for just today but for everything that you do and have done and will continue to do to help us advance the mission. So I think we'll open it up for any questions and um, Amber may be the only one that can see them and then so uh, we'll address those. Thank you Miguel and Victoria. Um, yeah, we do have a few questions questions in here. Um, so the first one says, how can I help spread the word about these new goals as a walker? Um, Miguel, would you like to take that one? 
Sure. I mean, I think through your typical channels, um, and of course social media is a great way. We have a number of assets available, and if you go to common.org, there's a microsite um, that is about more than pink, and there are tools that you can use there. There are, um, Amber can give you, can get to you any kind of um, the uh, graphics that we use. You can share those on, on your social media, share them with all your donors. I would recommend, you know, email blast to your, you know, your audience, your contacts, and especially a huge, huge thanks in education and information to anybody who's donated toward your fundraising. Okay. I also want to say that we created a really nice brochure, an electronic brochure called 50 and 10, Susan G. Komen's Bold Goal for Shaping History and Saving Lives. So a lot of the points that we talked about today, about where we've been and where we want to go, you'll find in the document available on Coleman.org. Um, and that will be a great resource to pull out things for your social, things for email, things for your Facebook So align directly with our messaging. Thank you, Victoria. All right, there's a lot of questions rolling in now that we got the ball started. Um, let's see here. One of the questions is, what resources will be developed to help us use this information to raise more money and gain support? I think we just kind of covered that. Another question we have is, will this be shared at the upcoming DFW three-day on-site? Um, yes and no. Um, so this specific um, PowerPoint will not be shared on-site. However, we are recording it. So for those three-dayers that maybe couldn't have joined us today, um, they will have the opportunity to go back and um, see the slides, hear what Miguel and Victoria had to say. Um, but we do have messaging um, throughout the weekend. Um, we have, you know, videos. We talk about more than pink. We talk about our bold goal. Um, so there is an opportunity for that to, for that discussion to continue. And you know, you guys, uh, and I'll you know put that out there. Um, you guys are more than welcome to um, address me with questions while we're on site. You know, we also have members of our SLT, um, our senior leadership team, that have been traveling to each of the events. Um, so there is an opportunity for um, for dialogue as well. But again, um, this um, this slideshow and presentation in um, in specific will be available um, once we complete it here. Yeah, and I think just to add, um, really, this is the first time we this, this is for all intents and purposes. This is an internal document. This is you know kind of our our staff plan. But um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. You know, we see you as an extended part of the family, and we know that um, the mission direction of this organization is very important to you. And that's why we had this conversation and said, you know, this is, it's okay. It is okay to share this outside of just that because this is the three-day community, which we see as part of the extended family. So this is really the first time we've shared this outside of staff um, or, you know, an internal audience. All right, and this is a question about DIY. Um, so Miguel, um, you might have to speak to that or we may need to do um, some research. But the question is, the DIY fundraising on Komen.org, is there consideration being given to have the ability for that fundraising to be set up to be credited to an individual's Race for the Cure fundraising account or three-day fundraising account? Um, you know, I, I, I just... I feel like I just saw a few emails about this because there were questions and concerns about some um, confusion that when they people saw the DIY button, they thought they could um, do fundraising for Race for the Cure. So um, I'm not sure that I would answer honestly if I said there's consideration, but I am honest in saying um, that there is discussion about how to clarify this and figure out how we can do this. And I think I also heard on, on site in Seattle that um, people that were asking, is there a way that we can combine those two? Um, so I'll, I will not use the word consideration because I want to be 100% honest, but I want you to know that there is discussion about it and, like, and then in parentheses quietly with a whisper, I would say consideration like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. Um, this question, uh, I think, is leaning towards Victoria. Um, so this person said, they love hearing that METS is a big focus. 
how will Komen be sharing this with the Mets community, as this is where I get a lot of pushback about supporting Komen? Why is there so much confusion? Mm. Yeah, we've been very active with the Mets community and have been stepping up our involvement um, quite significantly in the past few months. In fact, we just joined a metastatic conference up in Seattle. Judy will be speaking at a conference in Los Angeles. So you'll see us becoming much more visible and speaking directly to the community. Um, you may also want to share with your supporters that Common is a founding member of the Metastatic Breast Cancer Alliance, and we work alongside many Met specific organizations and pharma. Um, and we want to be seen as a collaborator, though, and you know, sometimes we want to be a little bit more reserved about tuning our own horn because we don't want to be seen as, you know, we're taking over the space. We want to work alongside the other organizations as well. Um, but you'll see some more uh, activity from us in those spaces. You'll see some more activity from us on social and Facebook talking specifically about not only the overall investment we make, but some of the specific projects like the one I talked about today with our young investigators just so you have some more examples of the specific things that we're investing in. Um, if you find that someone has a question and you need an answer from us, you can feel free to reach out to us and um, we'll give you as many resources and talking points um, as you need. Awesome. Thank you, Victoria. Um, we have time for a couple more questions. So um, another one I've got is, Aunt I am in the lower part of Texas, out of touch with an affiliate. If called on to give a talk, how do I access informational pieces? Um, I think Miguel um, touched on that. Um, you can go to Komen.org, and all of our um, information resources are there. And Victoria also spoke about the 50 and 10 brochure, which I believe is also on Komen.org, um, which talks about, has a lot of great resources um, to use on social, email, et cetera, um, about how we are going to um, achieve this goal that we have set out to do. Um, so Komen.org would be your first stop. Yep, and on Komen.org we also have some really nice resources that you can download about the research investment. We do something called Fast Facts, which summarize the overall investment in particular areas that we've made. And you, you can find those Fast Facts on our research pages. You can find one on metastasis. You can find one on new therapeutics. There's even one on there about our disparities research investment. Um, and all those provide really great facts and figures. Um, I do admit that it can be difficult to find stuff because we have a ton of information. Um, so Amber, maybe afterwards we can just give a quick cheat sheet as to yep. the links where you can find like just a couple of these things easier because we have a we have a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Absolutely, I think that's a and great I idea. Um, we'll send out the questions um, that we don't. We'll send out all the questions um, and any of the questions that we don't get answered. Um, today, we'll send that out to everyone who is on the phone, um, but we can also include in that email um, kind of the quick links to some of that, um, some of those bigger pieces of information. Um, let's see, we've got time for a couple more. Um, Victoria, this one goes back to you. Um, it says, because of negative press in the past, it has been harder to secure donations. To clarify, did you say 80 cents of every dollar is spent on research and programs? No, 80 cent, uh, yes, 80 cents of every dollar is spent on programs. Um, that includes research and that includes all the work that we that we invest in in communities, yes. Thank you. I've got a couple questions specific to 3-Day about expanding um, into other markets, um, specifically markets that were previously eliminated. Um, to the couple of you that had asked that question, um, at this time, we are not looking into expansion um, into any of those markets um, for 2017. Um, as you guys know, the um, registration is open for the seven current markets um, at the 3 dayorg um, But we are looking at all of our programs um, that were introduced um, this year, and we're constantly reevaluating, um, taking our key learnings, and really um, making sure that we are putting our best foot forward to continue to grow this program and expand it. Um, so for 2017, um, we still will be in our current seven cities, um, but again, we are always looking to grow and expand and reevaluate on um, the things that worked and maybe didn't work in the year before. Um, but we are, you know, it's a constantly evolving cycle over here when it comes to um, all things three days. 
Uh, let's see, we have time for one more question. Um, Victoria, this one's for you. We'll close out with this one. Um, it says, how did you pick 50% reduction in breast cancer mortality? What is the science behind that stat, or is it more of a dream number? Hmm. Um, a little bit of both. So our scientific <laughs> advisory board took a look at the evidence um, of what we've already been able to achieve in terms of reduction in mortality over a 30-year history. They also took a look at existing research that shows the benefit of early detection, patient navigation, um, and getting people connected to existing therapies in a timely fashion. I just talked about one of those studies um, that uh, gave the figure of a 30 or a third percent reduction if we just connect people to care today. We looked at other patient navigation studies as well. And then we looked at, you know, what's on the horizon in terms of discovery? Where are we with understanding the biology of breast cancer? Where are we with therapies in, in the pipeline? Um, and based on all that evidence, um, our scientific advisors, which some of you may know, represent pretty much the brain trust of breast cancer around the world. Our experts are from the world's leading institutions focused on making a difference in breast cancer. And based on all of the evidence, based on their knowledge and what they're seeing, they strongly recommended that Coleman get behind a reduction of 50% within the next decade. They feel that this is achievable based on what we've learned collectively at the field, how poised we are to address this, um, and Coleman's role in leading this effort. Um, and it is aggressive, it is bold, but they feel that we are the organization with our community that can take this forward. Awesome. All right, guys. Can I just well, add, I just want yep, to, go ahead, sorry, just, add, just add really fast that, you know, we talked about all of these resources on Komen.org, and this is one of the things that, as a non-scientist, I really appreciate because I, I think that was a great question. Like, is this just kind of like a dream number? Um, not only are we putting the number out there, but we're saying how we're going to do it. There are a lot of organizations that will say, oh, we're going to double our funding, or we're going to do this, or we're going to do that, but they rarely tell you how. Um, and I think this is uh, something that we take a lot of pride in, that we're, we're just very rigorous about not just making false claims and big, big dreams. And so all of these links that, you know, um, we'll, we'll send you, um, Take a look and read through these, this in, information. There's really good information and backup for everything that you need. And um, I, I think it's just really, really great work, especially coming from Victoria and um, her team. And just makes just shows how, how strong we are and the good work that's being done. So sorry, I just wanted to, to plug, plug our mission team because they're just, just very solid. No, that's great. Um, and so for those of you who are still on the line, uh, um, we have hit our 45-minute time limit for the day, um, but thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon, this morning, whatever time zone you're in. Um, again, we just wanted to um, give you guys the opportunity to see how integral the three-day is going to be and how important the three-day is going to be um, in achieving this bold goal and um, give you, like Miguel said, some inside scoop on um, on what we're doing as an organization and what our plans are, you know, to achieve this bold goal. Um, so we will go through all of the questions that were submitted, um, the ones we answered and the ones that we didn't, and um, we will get those typed up with answers and send those out to all of you. Um, and we will also include um, some quick links to um, some of the informational pieces that we discussed. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we are working to finalize our next mission webinar um, either for November or December. We're kind of working with the holidays, so be on the lookout for information on that. And I guess the next time I will see some of you will be here in a couple weeks at the DFW 3 day. So um, feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions or concerns about anything, and we'll talk soon. Um, and thank you for Miguel and Victoria for joining us. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.